welcome to the Five Letters Podcast, featuring myself, Yells, alongside Cam, and yo, it's me, Bez. Bez, Bez. Check, check, check. Yes, we're going straight in this week. Um, no <laughs> no intro, so no nothing. Let's just get straight to it. Last week, no n- no intro in general. This week, no intro song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're slacking, we're slacking. Um, but yeah, welcome to episode 45 of the Five Letters Podcast. Um, it's myself, Yells. We've got Cam to the left of me. We've got Bez sat across from me. Um, again, this is that bizarre world. Whenever this happens, I'm always like thrown off a bit. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, episode forty-five. Um, how are you, man? Doing? Talk to me. Like, how's how are you feeling? I I know the answer, but <laughs> tell tell the listeners how you are feeling. The struggle is real today. The struggle is real. Um, yeah, when obviously went out yesterday. Uh, Yell's birthday. Yell's will fill you lot in. On, I'm sure a lot more than I can. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, it was a late one, so I got in quite late. And yeah, today is a struggle. Today is a struggle. Yep. Yeah, man, I've just been sleeping all day pretty much. <laughs> just been tired, throat, voice gone from last night. It's nice. Voice gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, obviously I'm in the same boat as you lot. Like the lot, I mean, one of the last things I want to do right now is be talking. But hey ho, we have a podcast <laughs> that we need to we need to actually do, so we'll do it. Um but yeah, so it was my birthday on Friday, which was yesterday, yesterday yeah. yeah. Um well, when you got here, this uh, probably two days ago. But yeah, it was my birthday on Friday. So we went out to Fabric Nightclub in London. It was uh, P Money Presents. And who did we see? We saw P Money, Frisco, Manga, St. Hilaire, Blacks, uh, Mez with Grand Mixer, Kirby T with Manga, um, DJ Intense with P Money. Uh, we saw Spyro as well with a bunch of people, uh, Flo Dan. Um, Logan Logan uh, Tia Talks was there as well I saw her on stage um, Just lots and lots and lots of people Honestly um, And it was just, Yeah it was one of those ones Like we got there um, And we got stuck in And then about, <laughs> within about 10 minutes Everyone was like Ah oh, Can't <laughs> Got a stitch <laughs> I'm out of breath Like it was It was a proper workout of a party And we, we're getting We're getting on in the age as well So like Can't, can't quite keep up with the youngins um, and I was a I sweat bucket in there as well. I love the mosh pits and guests. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the mosh pit was a lot. The mosh pit, the mosh pits were definitely a lot. Like I was, I was fully involved. Um, there was one point where like everyone did the circle that didn't do the mosh, and I was dying because I was like, like I probably should have been because of where I was, I was quite in front of everyone, and I was like, I should have been like it was either me or maybe the guy like opposite me that should have been the first one to kind of jump in the yeah. middle. But I was like, I'm too old. I'm not. No way. I know better than to be the first person in the mosh pit. I feel like most people just didn't know when it when, when the, the drop, drop was, was coming. coming. Yeah, yeah and then, and then happens, they missed and it. it. Was like, and then they were like, do we wait for the next one or what? What's going yeah. on? And I was like, I know the song, so I yeah. knew when the drop was happening. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm not gonna be the first guy to jump in. <laughs> like, nah, man. I've seen what happens to the first guy. I'm not gonna be that guy. <laughs> But no, like mosh pits are definitely still fun, um, and it's definitely fun to like just go and jump around for like a couple of hours. Like it definitely, definitely gets a, uh, definitely brings me back to being young. Anyway, like doing that sort of I stuff. I think Fabric was where like started my moshing career because like, that was the first place I'm pretty sure I was in a mosh pit. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. And then there was just festivals and yeah. stuff in there. Yeah, like just other clubs. Um, but I yeah, like was... in other clubs you don't really get like a proper mosh pit. You get like kind of people jumping around and going oh. a bit crazy, but not like a proper like fabric get proper mosh pit like festival mm. kind of mosh pit it was less people but yeah still like proper like they yeah. make proper space exactly like, yeah. proper, proper space and then yeah is there good good moshes in them <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah shout out to everyone man shout out to everyone who performs like it was definitely a very very entertaining night man um i i really enjoyed it um I feel like the full the full gang like enjoyed it to some degree as well, which I was quite quite surprised by. I was I was expecting people to be like, oh my god, like twenty minutes in, like yo, can we go? <laughs> uh, but nah, it seemed like everyone everyone to varying degrees, but everyone enjoyed themselves. It's uh, like you said though, like I feel like it goes very quickly because like we got there like just after twelve, mm. 
And then I feel like next thing you know, it's like four o'clock. Four o'clock, yeah. yeah. It's just like, yeah. Because it, it's so intense, whatever. You don't have time to actually realise that the time's going by. Yeah. Like, it's just very, it's like a very full-on, like, party experience. Yeah. Like, whereas, like, another, like, a different type, type of club, you have more time to, like, you might go and dance, then you go sit down, you go to the smoking area, you yeah. go to the bar to get drinks, whatever. You're doing all this stuff. And, like, as you're doing all this stuff, you're probably checking the time and you're feeling things go by because you're mm-hmm. doing all that, this different stuff. But when you're, like, just... Going back in, <laughs> just stuck in, like <laughs> jumping around, like you don't realize that you've been jumping around for three hours. Like it just, it, it just your body starts hurting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was sick. It was sick. It was a good time, man. Um, and then on Thursday, um, we well, you both of you were there as well. We went yep. to a, a restaurant, a French restaurant called Gautier in Soho, a little vegan French restaurant. Um, well, the maddest part for me, like it was, so we had a 11 course tasting menu. Um, some of it was so sexy. Some of it was okay. And some of it was, wasn't quite for me, but it was, it was a great experience. But the maddest part for me, and you guys can talk to me about how you lot felt about this as well, um, was the main course of the 11 courses was a dish that they've named tomorrow. Um, because the head chef, uh, Alex got here, He's a vegan and what he basically sees the future of food being, according to our waitress on the night, is kind of, uh, well, the dish was, to explain what the dish was, the dish was um, a 3D printed, um, I guess you can call it a steak. I don't think she she ever said it was a steak, no. but she said it was like a 3D printed I can't remember what she called it actually, but she just she said, just it's, said it's three D printed. Okay, so it was <laughs> it was a three D printed something on the plate. Um, it was made from wheat, soy protein, and pea protein. It looked like a steak, and like we were spun. <laughs> like I was like, "Yo, what is happening here?" It looked like and like the little um, gravy that we got with it as well. It probably looked like it was meant to be a steak dish, which is why I'm saying it was a steak dish. Mm. Um, so yeah, Alex got here. Apparently, his vision of the future because he wants to be he wants everyone to be vegan. He wants it to be less about you know vegan food and regular food. He wants everyone to kind of have like a the same kind of diet where it's just food, vegan is food. and like and yeah, just vegan is food. Like yeah. this is what we eat as a human race. Um, and his way to to accomplish that, I guess, to, and bring people over to veganism is by three D printing meat. It was entirely convincing. It was like the most convincing like fake meat I've ever seen. So like corn, like whatever, all these corn dishes mm-hmm. or beyond burgers or whatever, whatever, whatever. Like this was easily the most convincing thing that I've seen and it spun me. What did you think? Yeah, I was like, looking at it when it came to me on the plate, it didn't look too bad. But then when I cut it open, I was like, this doesn't make any sense to me what I'm seeing. Because obviously I've, I've never handled any kind of meat before in any state. Yeah. And I've only ever like seen it on TV or whatnot. And then cutting into that, I was like, this... This seems how I would have envisioned meat being, specifically a steak being, like for my whole life. I was like, this is not for me. I tasted it; it didn't taste nice. The texture was a bit weird, and like just looking at it on the plate was like, ah, man, it's not for me. But it was interesting, and I would, I would see it again, and I would like, like to play with it <laughs> <laughs> rather than eating it. I would like to. Just cut it open and and move it about. That's not a bit. <laughs> yeah, just just break it down and see how it all all connects together. That's so jokes. Yeah, um, yeah. For me, it was a bit. It was a bit. It was obviously. I don't. I don't like steak myself. So when I saw it come out on the plate, I never. I just saw it look like steak, and I was like, I'm probably not going to enjoy it because if it tastes like steak, then I'm not going to like it. And then, like, yeah, when cut it open. The fact it looked like a rare steak, like it was really red inside, like the outside was cooked like a steak and the inside was red and looked bloody, which, and then like, and you also see like the fibers off the, yeah. the thing, which was like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's what was so confusing. Cause like in, if you see like fake meat, like even like bird's eye chicken and stuff like that, where it's got chicken in quotes in it, yeah. <laughs> but like it's so little that like, they don't have fibers or anything like that. Like this had proper like the fibers and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the, the, the like strands and all that kind of stuff. I'm mm-hmm. like, this yeah. is ridiculous. Like, how is this not actual meat? So I ate it and like it, I ne- I've never had like steak before in my life, obviously. Um, but like the way, 
it just I was as I was eating it, this I was like, this is just like everything that when people say, oh, that's a good steak, and like what they describe it as, this is what it like it is, and like you always see like people eating steak and they're chewing and they're chewing and they're chewing and they're chewing and they're chewing, and, they're chewing. and that was exactly what I was doing. <laughs> I was like, oh wow, this is like chewy. <laughs> like um, I didn't expect that at all because obviously the only kind of meat thing I've eaten is fish, and fish is rarely chewy. Yeah, yeah. So I was I, I just when I think about meat, I just think about fish. And I expect all of them to be similar in that kind of way. It's, it's the white meats, they're like, because chicken's similar, like it's not mm. really chewy, but then the red meats are the chewy ones where you get like pork and stuff like that, where they could be quite chewy sometimes, or like lamb and things like that. I think lamb's, um, lamb's, yeah, lamb's quite chewy as well, actually. Mm, I think so, yeah. So I was just like, yeah, it's crazy, but like, yeah, um, the way it was like just all coming apart and stuff as you like put it in, like just falling off the bone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like nice and tender, and like, I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, I, I, I don't. I, just, I was just like, yeah. I understand what they were going for in this dish. I understand they're literally fully like trying to get people like, yo, look, you can have the same experience, just and it, and the animal doesn't have to die for it, essentially. But it, it just seems like it would. I guess a steak is expensive because it just seems like it would be really expensive. I don't know how because mm-hmm. three D printing isn't like a common. Nah, so like you get on from Tesco. She, she even said that only ten restaurants in the world offer three yeah. D printed food of any variety. Yeah, and I'm like yeah, that kind of makes sense to me. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. Like so, the pr- I'm not gonna say what the price was. Um, I mean, I could, but I'm not going to. Um, but that was one of the dishes where I was like, yep, yeah, this is why it's so expensive. Like mm-hmm. the three D printing. The other one was the. The dish that had the tr- was that the uh, pasta with the truffles yeah. inside, and, and truffle then truffle shaved, shaved on top. On top I was like, "Yeah, this is why it's expensive." Like, um, but it was good, man. I think we all had dishes that we did like. We all had dishes that we didn't. Do you like, remember what your favorite dish was? Um, yes, yeah, so mine one? was the mushroom pasta. Not in- not including desserts. Yeah, the mash the mushroom pasta with the truffles with on the it. truffle shaving. That like, was my favorite. That was that was banging. Yeah, that was good. Surprisingly, mine was probably the carrot one. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Obviously, as you know, I I don't like carrots. Yeah. Well, I didn't like carrots when I was younger. Um, but yeah, it was it was pretty good. Yeah, and no, no, no. I didn't dislike the soup that much. I didn't eat eat it all, but I. What do you mean I, the cappuccino thing? Yeah, the cappuccino thing. Okay. Burnt yeah. orange cappuccino. I wasn't too much a fan of that one. Um, I liked the like hard carrot. Like shaving thingies, I like. Oh, the yeah, crispy, 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 crispy. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah that, that was that was that was that was yeah, that was top tier. That was elite. Um, I think I'm gonna actually no. Do you know what? I really enjoyed the first course, the canapes, and I kind of know I was the only one that liked those. But I was like, <laughs> actually, yeah, like so. The, there was two canapes that we were served. I think there was one that was like this tomato one, like a wafer, um, or like a thin wafer thing and it was like tomato like smoky tomato something rather oh it was a BLT it was meant to be a BLT yeah, flavor yeah. thing and I, I was like this it didn't I mean to me it didn't taste meaty it just tasted like smoky tomatoes and but it was so light and it was so airy and it's fresh it was so fresh as well like that that I, that was just like a party in my mouth just how fresh it was I was like wow <laughs> Like, now, I know what you mean because I, I really like the texture of it and like, if it had a different flavour I probably would have enjoyed it but because it was tomato flavoured and it was like strong it was like literally yeah. like drinking a tomato juice yeah. or like you know the baby tomatoes when you bite into them right. just, but, pfft, but I love that I, I love them oh. I love them like, when those are like properly like it, it's tough because you have to get them at the right well you don't have to but like when you get them at the right time when they're really like they're just ripe yeah. and they're really fresh as well that is just again a party in my mouth. I love that. So that's probably why I like that dish a lot. And then I the didn't. I didn't. Is... I know Cam or, or my sister wasn't too fan of like a big fan of like the smokiness of it. Um, I mean, I wasn't a fan of any part of that. Like I, I put it in my mouth, and I instantly was like, I need to get this out of my mouth. I just have to get it down <laughs> some way. I was yeah. like, just, I was. I had it in my mouth for ages, just chewing on it, trying to just get it down my throat. I had to drink some water with it to get it down. Yeah. I, I, not, I have to say, my mum almost fine. ripped off the entire meal of that. So we had, like I say, we had eleven courses, and <laughs> yeah, she, she had. First. <laughs> we had, yeah, we had two canapes, and she had that tomato one first, and like she was just like no, and then she just, <laughs> she just didn't want to try the second canapé after that, even though like we had to like literally like say, Do you know what, no, this second one. So the second canapé was like aubergine with, um, I feel like, like it was nuts. Yeah, yeah, it was like some kind of nut on it. Pine nuts, maybe. 
Yeah, something like that. And it was like, um, yeah, it was just really, it was really light. It was just like a spoonful of aubergine uh, with pine nuts. Um, or like a piece of aubergine that was really well cooked and well seasoned for me. It was a little I bit thought, oily, I thought it was good to, but it was well, well seasoned. seasoned yeah. And yeah. yeah, like for me. I, so I was like to my mom, I was like, I promise you, like I'm sorry you didn't enjoy the tomato, smoky tomato thing, but I promise you, you will like this. And she was like, no, and she was trying to give it to my dad. And she was like, no, you have it. I was like, no, because if you don't do this, you're not going to, you're going to look, be looking at everything else. Like really, so every other, and then when she had that, she was like, okay. And then she didn't really have any problems after that. Other than the steak thing, she was like, I'm not eating that. Yeah. But yeah no, no, you're the only one who ate that. No yeah. one ate the steak thing. <laughs> did you Did you try it as well? I tried it and it just tasted like steak. Like, it, and it, as you said, like the texture of it is very chewy and whatnot. Yeah. And it just, it felt like steak. Like it literally felt like I was tasting and felt like a, like a steak. It's actually so crazy. Because <laughs> I don't feel like there was anything different from a mistake from a mistake. Mistake. yeah <laughs> they could have just been lying to us that's what i mean that, that, that's what i feel so weird about that yeah, yeah she could have been the waitress is like i promise you yeah it's absolutely 100 like, i'm vegan, vegan. i've been like, vegan for three years and all this sort of stuff yeah i, I wouldn't i wouldn't be i couldn't do it from if it was a animal thing yeah yeah she was even saying like i can't i can't remember if it was that dish or another dish where she was like there's no animals in the process at all Oh, oh no, it was the truffle one. The yeah, truffle yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, the pigs, um, the pigs or something to hunt. For. Yeah, they use because uh, pig, pigs and dogs have a great sense of smell. Um, in some places, they they train them to hunt truffles. Um, but she was saying that the truffles that we had were uh, found by humans mm. you know, looking and finding on on their own without getting animals involved, which is to be fair, that's quite good because some people like some vegans are very serious that like, they won't take anything that has anything to do with yeah like they won't eat honey because that's the even though it's not it, it's not anything to do with the bee the bee doesn't it doesn't come out of the bee it's but the bees involved in, are involved in the creation so it's like oh we're exploiting the bees by forcing them to make honey. yeah like because in terms of mass produced honey yeah, yeah, yeah. like bees may naturally make honey anyway but in yeah. terms of mass produced it's just ridiculous so mm. they're like yeah we, we, they don't some vegans will say no it's natural it's fine and some vegans will be like nah but you're exploiting bees yeah and stuff um wasn't there another dish that she was talking about like um they're very careful to like keep bugs and stuff like completely away from it because like so that would be the wine i believe was it the wine yeah Okay, that so, was, that, yeah. so I'll be so like in yeah, so where you make wine and stuff, obviously, like with the grapes and whatnot. I think you were telling me, yeah, actually, that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. About, yeah, yeah. So, where they make wine with all the grapes and stuff, how, how like they mash up the wine, um, mash up the grapes to create the wine. Um, if you're not careful, it can be a case of getting like a lot of bugs and stuff in it. And some places will just not care <laughs> because it really who cares, but I think, yeah, so vegan wines they take special precautions to make sure that no like uh bugs and stuff get mm. caught up just to just literally to have the vegan label you see why it'd be so expensive though because like the truffles you happen to have human people searching for rather than like get like 10 pigs to go i know it's from truffles. australia it was australian it wasn't even yeah. like it was like nearby yeah it was yeah. australian truffles also. So it has to be from australia from there, yeah and you imagine yeah, you're having 10 20 people going to search for it rather than like pigs so you're just you're just filled it filling giving them mud as yeah. their dinner it was just for payment I just still can't believe we had 3D printed food, man. That literally... Went when she said 3D printed, I was like... What? My brain was like, how? That entire... At first. Yeah. And then I was like, I know, it makes sense. You print it and, and then, then you, you cook, cook it. it. Yeah. Like... I wonder what it looked like before it was cooked. Like, this is a would, just a big just blob. Maybe. Maybe. I have no idea. I, I, I believe that it should just... It probably just looked how it how looked, it looked. Cooked. Yeah, just... Probably just just exactly like, the same, yeah. but like... Without a maybe, bit of color, yeah. yeah, yeah, less color, and like it probably could have just looked like. I mean, I doubt it looked like actual steak, it, un, uncooked steak. It prob- the way it looked inside, it wouldn't surprise me, you know, because I feel like it was. As I said, it was like a rare steak or like medium rare. So I, f- I feel like they probably could have well done it if they wanted to. Yeah. So I probably it probably did look something like a normal steak, and it was just because it wasn't it wasn't like a massive piece or anything. It was like yeah. a like palm sized. Small and palm size square, so mm. pretty, so yeah, cut like that. Yeah, so well, or maybe it probably comes as a big. big that's what I think. My yeah, point, and they just slice it, it down. Slice it down. Um, but yeah, I was just saying. So my dad was talking about Star Trek at points of the night. When we got that, I was like, "That's this is literally some Star Trek shit." Like, yeah, because that's how they make their food in like those kind of 
shit TV shows, them like sci-fi TV shows. They just mm-hmm. go, they go to like a microwave looking thing and just put in a number and the thing just comes out and materializes out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, and that, <laughs> that's literally what we had. I'm like, well, that's an SP- that's like literally something to tell people. Like yeah. when, uh, when, when you go back to work on Monday morning or whatever and someone's like, what did you do last weekend? You're like, oh, I had 3D printed food. <laughs> like, I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna. That's literally like people at work are gonna ask me like, "Oh, what did you do for your birthday?" I'm not gonna tell them anything about fabric because they don't need to know that. But I'll be like, "Yeah, I went to a restaurant, I had three D printed food. That's crazy." That is mad though. Mm. I want, I, I would like to see like the process of it. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I wonder like how things go into the three D printer to then disperse it out, and how does it? Just yeah, get, like, that's that's a good point. Out by it, does it just does it like come out like like a swirl? Like, yeah, because I because I have to, you have to imagine that the wheat, soy and pea proteins or whatever have been processed before they go into the machine. Yeah. So I'm sure it's not, I don't think they just put soybeans, peas and wheat wheat, into the machine and and then it comes out with that. I think you have to process those things first Mm -hmm. to then go into the machine. And then... Have you seen how actual 3D printer works? Sorry? Have you seen how actual 3D printer works? Yeah, it's wild. I I do wonder if it's like literally exactly the same as that. It just like prints up the layers... Just up and up and up and up and up, because the way the intricacy of like how the, the like you were saying about the fibers on the inside, yeah. you know, I feel like that would be the only way that it could, it could be done. do that if it did it like that. Go, like, go layer by layer. Yeah, there's gonna one day there'll be like a cooking show, yeah, that utilizes this, and we'll, we'll get to see more. Mr. Gortier is losing eyes. He needs to make a YouTube channel and like do something like that. He really, really should. Like, if this is what he's gonna be doing, he really, really should. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, that's that's. That is a way, like that, a video of showing the process of how to make that would be nuts. That would be big. Yeah. Like, everyone would watch that. This is mind blowing. Like, yeah. It's, it, and it would be one of those like trending, you see it and it's like, oh, well, this is interesting. Click. Wow. And that's how you get curious people, curious wanting to try it as well. Like, yeah. for example, like we were already in the restaurant. And then we got given this dish as pretty much a surprise because it was only listed as tomorrow in the menu. We didn't know what it was. It didn't say any ingredients, anything. It just had like the little allergens thing, yeah. which I think it said that, yeah, if you're allergic to soy, then this might be peak for you. But, <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, it didn't, it didn't have any ingredients or any like idea of what it was. It just said tomorrow. And we were all like, what is tomorrow? And then it was served to us. But like in terms of someone else, like the type of people that they're probably trying to get on side, like your diehard carnivores, mm-hmm. <laughs> they're not going to go, they're not, you're not going to be in the restaurant in the first place. No. But like a YouTube video like that, it, that has the potential maybe to go viral or something. Yeah. Could definitely peak, I think, could peak some people's interest. Where it's like, right, do you know what? Yeah, that's actually wild. I like, think, it, yeah, I think the fact that it tastes like, so, because I think a lot of people would just be like, why would I bother eating fake um, steak when I can get real steak? But the fact that it tastes just like it as well, because like mm. chicken, corn chicken doesn't taste anything like chicken. Mm. But because this one tastes just like it, they, I would be curious about it. If I enjoy steak, I would have loved it. I feel like, I, wow. Like, yeah, no, I love it. Yeah. Um, Take and all it, of yours and off your be, plates. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it would have been perfect. And it would be perfect for someone who, yeah, it's like, who loves their meat, they love their steak or whatever, mm-hmm. but feels like they want to do more for the planet or yeah. for animals or whatever like by eating less meat or whatever that would be that would be perfect that would give them the perfect excuse to be like okay I'm gonna, yeah. I mean at least do you have this instead of steak maybe once or twice or whatever I wonder if like the 3D printers will just get start getting like more accessible because then I like obviously like everyone's starting to do vegan stuff in their menus like McDonald's mm. got the milk plant KFC's got vegan chicken and stuff like that so I wonder if they could start doing something similar if obviously the 3D printers become not a, for a long while it'll be a while off yeah, yeah considering there's only 10 they, they said 10 restaurants yeah. in the world that do 3D printed food so far it's not, it's not it's, easy yeah it's not, it's not like cheap that KFC will be nah, doing it's not going to be mainstream <laughs> for a while I think and I reckon I assume that the other restaurants will all like kind of find down establishments like this one as well probably yeah so it's probably not going to be for a while um, what was your lot's worst dish the worst dish for me, was probably, I mean, to be fair, it was probably that one, the tomorrow. Yeah. Like, I did, I forced myself to finish it, even, so I didn't, there was a couple of dishes I didn't finish, but I think what I enjoyed of those dishes, I enjoyed more than tomorrow. So, like, the capers one, was it capers one? No, it was the fennel one, sorry, fennel. the fennel one. I didn't finish, but I just had had enough fennel, but I enjoyed it to a degree, um, what I had, like, 
Whereas tomorrow, I just ate it because I was like, this is an experience. I'm never going to do this again, probably. Let me just do it. And then I can at least be able to say that I've done it. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, and the other oh, I, mean, I always forget what the, those t- turn it right things were. But I hated those. Yeah, they were not good. They're, I don't know what they're called now, but... That was the worst tasting thing for me. But the rest of the dish was actually pretty nice. But those little things, those little turn it things that were on top. Was that on the sake sauce? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, one. yeah. The sauce. Wait, which one was that? The um, it had like the round kind of like little like pad discs kind of things. On top. Yeah, yeah. And they, had, and they put the oh, sake thing the over it. Cow something or other. Yeah, that's the, that's the name of the turnip thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I didn't like that. It was one like either. a vegetable that I've never had before. And I took one bite of it. I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> but um, the rest of that dish was okay. Um, but what about you guys? What was your least favorite? Do you think my least favorite was the pasta one. D- oh, the one we liked. Yeah, the I didn't truffles. like anything about that. Okay. I mean, I didn't. I actually picked the truffle on the t- off the top and ate it by itself, and I was like, "This tastes fine." I'm sure if I had it on top of something that I was enjoying, it would be adding something extra. Yeah. But everything about the the pa- I didn't like the texture of the pasta. It was, I mean, it was too al dente, al dente for me. I was a bit. Yeah, um, that's one thing about it. Actually, I don't know. I, I like I like al dente pasta. They give it, it a little was, chewiness. It was, I think it's because it's difficult to get into. Yeah. Because it was also obviously it's it's um, cheese. No, no, no. Because it's like not it's brown or whatever it was made from. Mm. I feel like that adds extra onto the al dente ness. It's really tough normally. And then it was extra tough because it wasn't necessarily cooked I think that thoroughly. Because it had filling, I think you have to kind of cook those ones al dente because they have yeah, filling because yeah, yeah, otherwise it starts to fall apart. apart. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, I, I I wasn't a fan of the mascarpone cheese inside it. Mm-hmm. And then also the sauce that it was in was just too salty. And yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that yeah, was yeah I had quite actually. a bit of salt, yeah. Yeah, so I was just like, I, I took like maybe two bites and then I just stopped. I was like, this is not for me. Mm. And then obviously the the first thing that we had was also nearly like nearly I was nearly real enough from then. Also. I was like, "Am I gonna throw up? I need to not throw up. Let me hold this." Now. <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe it was that bad for you. Like, it was so Cause bad. It, it was, wild because obviously it's like it was like a gel thing. The center bit was like a gel thing, yeah. and then the crisp outside wafer thing and whatever wasn't super solid. It was like it was like a like a tortilla kind of thing, mm. and I don't really like tortillas like that. And um, yeah, so all of it was just like, I put it in my mouth, crunched down. I was like, no, I don't know. <laughs> I would have had like three or four of those gladly. <laughs> no. Like, oh. So like, if you like, if I knew you lot weren't going to like it, I would be like, I'll have this. I'll give it, give me that. Yeah. I mean, the, the aubergine follow up was enough to cleanse my palate. Yeah. I did it the wrong way. I ate the aubergine thing first. <laughs> and then I think that, to be fair, I think that, because then that, I was like, that was nice. So, you know, where like, you said your yeah, mom yeah. tasted the first thing. It was like, everything no. was feeling horrible. I'm not yeah. anything else. I was like, oh, okay, this must be nice too. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. But, um, then, yeah, it was obviously, the ocean thing was nice. Though, so I was like, yes, yeah, okay. If things could be either way. Like, yeah, 50, 50, I got, 50, yeah, 50, 50, 50 yeah. literally. Um, I think my worst thing was probably the, not including the steak thing, um, probably the turnip dish thingy. Mm. Yeah, I didn't like the the topping bit on it. Yeah, that's fair. What was the feta cheese on again? I'm trying to remember because I I remember liking the feta cheese. But I can't remember what that was in the bread, wasn't it? Ah, yes, the oh, bread. That was good. Yeah, the bread with the um, pico de gallo. Yeah, pico yeah, de gallo, which okay. is not French at all. I was I, I was meant to say that to you like on the day, but I was like, it's actually, Mexican, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah. But the restaurant is meant to be a French restaurant. When she said pico de gallo, I was like, this ring, this name rings a bell, but I didn't put it to, put two and two together. I was like, I heard this before, mm. but I, yeah, didn't think about it. Yeah, but yeah, pico de gallo with a bit of fre- a feta cheese and a bread. What was the green thing that was sitting on? Because it had like some green liquid sitting on top of it as well. Oh yeah, um, it was like oh, I can't remember. It's it literally just like food coloring or something. But it was some kind of it like, was um it was herbal. some kind of oil. Mm. It was like a, it was a something oil made from something. I can't oh, okay. what, but yeah, yeah. Well, yeah that, that was good. That was I, I completely forgot that. about it, but that was that was banging. That was banging. Yeah, because I, I like I like salsa or pickle de guy or whatever. I like mm-hmm. that stuff, and the bread was good. Um, even though it was like, it was meant to have like olives and tomatoes in it. Yeah, but when I she really, said what it was, I was like, it didn't. The flavor wasn't strong in it, so it was good. Yeah, it just tasted like bread. Like, yeah, basically. Yeah, but with like little bits. Yeah, yeah. It was good. It was good bread, and then yeah, the feta was convincing. That that was what was crazy. Like all the cheeses were really convincing. Like, mm-hmm. 
they were because if you get vegan cheeses and stuff, and they could just they can, yeah, not, yeah, you get vegan on. cheeses that taste like um, they taste like wherever they're made from, yeah, rather than cheese. So like, if you get you, some of them are made out of coconut, and it will just taste coconut. Mm-hmm. Like, but this was just like, yeah, it tasted actually like yeah the cheese and stuff. Um, was the la- the last one with the cheese? Was it cream cheese? It was meant to be yes, yeah, yeah. Because that that smelled convincing to me, and I don't, I just don't, don't like the smell. smell. Yeah. So I, you saw me, I was just eating the, the, like the thing that was on the outside, the pastry mm. bit that was on the outside, and I didn't touch anything else. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Um, there was one dish that was, meant to, that was made out of coconut, so I was nervous it was going to taste coconut. I don't know it was. It didn't. Wasn't that, wasn't was that the, the fetter? Was it? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, I'm getting confused in my head. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely enjoyed it. So I went there last year as well. Um, for my birthday last year I went by myself and I think last year I would have gave it absolutely 10 out of 10 spot on like the meal was so buff last year like changed my life like when I write my autobiography yeah, it literally is going to be two sections before Gautier after Gautier because <laughs> last year was 10 out of 10 like it was great um, this year I'd probably give it like I'm gonna say like a, uh, I was gonna say seven and a half, but I'll I'll give it eight. I'll give it eight because I, I enjoyed myself. Like, um, the like in terms of like the full package, like the vibe of the restaurant was still very nice. The um, hostess or the waitress, like whatever I can't remember her official title, but she was really nice. Um, and she uh, informed us about all the dishes. She asked, answered all the questions that we had, even though, even when we were like saying we don't like this, she was still like. Uh, yeah just very understanding she wasn't like oh i hope i'll find one dish that you like and yeah exactly exactly and then when there was one i think one of the desserts we all ate which yeah, was probably like the, the only one, yeah. yeah the only the thing strawberry thing yeah that the... we everyone ate with no like qualms mm-hmm. and she was like oh i'm so happy that you know we found one that, you, that everyone <laughs> i was surprised the mummy mother ate that yeah because obviously the thing on the top the whatever like, it was like um was it Ma- mango Mer- meringue? Yeah, yeah. meringue. Yeah, I was surprised she just got just went straight and didn't say anything. Touch, it yeah. was soft yeah. as well, which was because this meringue is normally quite. It's normally like hard and powdery. I don't mm. like meringue, so I was a bit like, oh. Huh? But then oh. it, was, it was like a bit like cream. So I was like, oh, okay, this is quite nice actually. And then the thing was quite refreshing inside the little like mm. it's the little strawberry ice thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so good. And the, then the biscuit on the bottom. And yeah, then, yeah, and the biscuit on the bottom. And obviously they did. Uh, they wrote happy birthday and chocolate sauce on my plate as well. <laughs> I actually saw that coming because. When they were bringing it out, they brought to bears and then they skipped you. I was wondering why they did that. I literally, I was like, that's strange, but okay, fair <laughs> enough. But like, I just like, I just assumed that she kind of was just like, just, just, just doing the whatever, doing their things, going rogue, yeah. you know. Because like, the way they'd done it all the time was always me, my because I was sitting next to them, it was me, my dad to my left and my mum to the left of him. And they would always come and just bring our three plates and then they'd come back and then do Sebez who was on or Bez who was on my right. Then Cam was on the right of him and then my sister who was on the right of Cam and they'd do the other three that way like that. But then yeah, this time they did they skipped me, gave one to Bez on my right, one to my dad on my left and one to my mum further left and I was a bit like strange but fair mm-hmm. enough and then yeah they come back with the plate and it just says happy birthday and I'm like, oh, I was just, like, oh that's so sweet, sweet. That's so that's sweet cute. thank you so much <laughs> um, and she, yeah no she was funny though as well she was like my present to you is me not singing happy birthday and, yeah. I, was like, <laughs> and I was like god please that that would have been my worst nightmare I don't you could have had the voice of an angel that still would have been horrible the face was just us though so like you don't have everyone staring at you and things them things still it's all good it's, it's all good I don't even want to have my family sing happy yeah, birthday yeah yeah no. Nah. I remember one time my my nephew when he was younger this was maybe like 10 years ago came into my room and was like happy birthday and started singing I was like no stop <laughs> stop right now and then he went and told his mum and his mum came back to me like why did you tell him to stop he was happy to sing happy birthday to his uncle and I'm like it's just awkward I don't want it ah oh, man you're deep you're deep you're deep, you're deep. You're deep. yeah but that, 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 that's really that, that's really sweet if it's like a child or something I'll let it get it off because <laughs> that's that's yeah you're young like and they 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 they're discovering like certain things and they want to do things to for the people they love and i think that's really sweet so if a child yeah but an adult i'm like hell no just stop it's fine 
part of the tradition of birthdays. You gotta just stand there awkwardly while everyone sings happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> if we can leave it out, let's leave it out. Like, um, but yeah, so all that happened, and like the vibe in the restaurant was was quite nice. There was like only two other tables while we were there, and one of them left like really, really. Early. I don't even think we'd start eating by the by the time no, they got. They, the, they were in a rush. Restaurant. I heard them like saying like to the people, "Can you kind of?" speed up or something so when yeah. the woman came over she's like oh you have to get a train or something because we normally try and bring them out at a certain way right and, yeah because yeah. um yeah they were i think they were in a rush or something so ah, fair. yeah they but away. i think they left before we even eat so then it was just us on one other table and they left maybe halfway through and then from then we were the only ones on our, that there's a couple of floors in the restaurant and we were the only ones on our floor um so the atmosphere was just really really nice the bathroom food, was, food was good the bathroom, the bathroom was, cool. was interesting and like moisturizers and hair gel and all this yeah, stuff. They had everything they had everything in there literally yeah. could move in literally <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah like i say i'll, I'll give it an eight out of ten um what, what about you lot what's out of ten mm. I, I reckon you i reckon you're both going to be lower than eight but yeah 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 <laughs> i'm just wondering how much lower i think i'd give it a six because like, like even though a lot of the food i wasn't really that into um, the whole experience was great like it was really really good it was a 10 out of 10 experience but then obviously the food brings it down a bit okay that's fair I'd probably say the same like the experience was really good but then yeah the food was interesting there was like <laughs> like the yeah there was maybe two dishes where I everything actually enjoyed it mm. like, so out of 11 well I guess out of 11 there was probably four dishes so yeah I'd say yeah about six well six six and a half maybe yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but yeah, no, obviously, thank you both for hanging out with me this weekend or whatever. Like for You're welcome. That. Um, yeah, that was good, 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 yeah, good, good, good times. It was a lot of fun. Um, right then, do you not want to get into to all the madness that's going on in the world? Where do we start? Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I'm trying to keep this episode just light and breezy, innit? We didn't play any music in the intro. We're just trying to, trying to get through it because um, we, we are always struggling. Like, Cam woke up today. He said he woke up at, what, four or five, did you say? Yeah. So I don't know why you're struggling. <laughs> she should be all right. No, but like, I'm, I, I got a good night's sleep, so my brain is fine, but my body is wrecked. Because <laughs> they're already jumping around and like moshing and stuff. I hear it, I hear it, I hear it. Um, me, yeah, we got home. What time did we get home, Beds? We got here it was about seven-ish. Se- 6.37, something like that. Yeah, I think it was seven. I think it was seven. Yeah. Because I remember looking at my f- uh, phone before I went to bed uh, or before I p- properly went to sleep. And I think it was like 10 past seven or something. Yeah. And I was like, right. So I think we got here about seven-ish. Probably, yeah. And then I was awake again. Definitely by 11.30 because, um, yeah, I remember, I, again, I checked my phone. So I might have been awake a bit before, but when I checked my phone, it was 11.30. And that's just, that that kind of sleep from like 7 to 11.30 when it's so bright outside, it's summer, mm-hmm. it's warm. Like that, it's just, a, it's a terrible sleep. So it just didn't feel like it did anything for me. And then on top of that, um just yeah the roughness of having been in mosh pits jumping around and being in that just super hot environment just de- sweating and getting dehydrated yeah. and on top of that i didn't like i didn't drink mad amounts of alcohol so i wasn't like properly hung over or something but I, you know when you drink alcohol you feel it you can feel it yeah <laughs> so yeah i'm just feeling a bit tender today feeling a bit uh yeah i literally woke up at the same time i think literally probably the exact same time because i woke up just in my phone i didn't even charge my phone i left it, just left it on the table and got into bed and then woke up, checked my phone, and it was 11.30 on the dot. But I, was, I woke up a bit before that and had to that kind of, uh, before I go <laughs> over. And yeah, I was rough. I was rough. And I, you know when it's like, I thought I was dying because it was just like getting mad hot and sweaty at one point. And I was like, it's not that warm. <laughs> I was like, and it wasn't like that when I first woke up. I was just kind of just sitting there for a period and just like, just getting like sweats. Like, oh my God, what the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. I yeah, I mean, I, I didn't even have like a proper duvet or anything, and I was sweating like I was just. I, I feel so uncomfortable. Why am I sweating so much? But yeah, just too warm. Yeah, it's way way too warm. But you were uh, so Cam stayed over with us um, because the the plan was that if he stays over after we go out, we'll get up when we get up and we'll record the podcast, and then we could all go about our day, like. 
<laughs> and we just like none of us had any motivation like so obviously me and Bez woke up at 11 30 Cam didn't wake up until four or five ish or whatever I didn't even I didn't know he was still sleeping all that time because I didn't even bother to check <laughs> on him because I was dealing with my own stuff <laughs> so yeah the, so right now it's like 10 o'clock and we're just only just recording now um so the plan went out the window but hey ho Hey, how it is, what it is. <laughs> Give us time to recover, at least. Give us time to recover, <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> Should we be more tired podcast if we'd done it yeah. earlier, I reckon? Yeah, absolutely. It was just, voices would have been sore, uh, everything. My head was banging. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But So let's get into like some of this real world stuff then. I mean, there's so much that's been happening. Like, I, uh, like from like serious stuff, like the abortion stuff in America, to... Still serious, but quite nonsensical, like the Vince McMahon stuff. Um, Actually, yeah. Can we talk about that? Because I okay. haven't seen anything about it, really. I'm cur- I obviously saw a sense of group chat, but I feel like you mm-hmm. would, you'd have pre-read more on it and stuff like that. Yeah. But I've seen that he's been in WWE like every week. Yeah. <laughs> like, I thought he was stepping down. And he just- so he's so... Okay, so he's stepped down as CEO while the investigation's going on. Yeah. But he's still in charge of the creative for the TV shows. Mm-hmm. So since he stepped down, he's just written himself to be on TV every week. Oh, okay. But he's, or not even every week, every Raw and SmackDown, which is twice a week. Yeah. Um, but he's not doing anything. Of, he's not in any storylines. He's not in anything. Guns like he literally, them. so like, yeah, I think the Raw, I, I, I didn't watch it, but I heard about it. The Raw appearance, he just comes out. Like obviously his music plays and like he just obviously, because the crowd is just idiots. They're like just singing his theme song and like doing the bowing. This is this is what I was so this is why I was like, can we talk about it? I'm like, I was so confused because I saw the SmackDown when he first obviously said he's appearing on SmackDown. Mm. And I was like, oh, I wonder what he, I didn't watch it. I just saw to put the clip up on Twitter. So I watched the clip, saw him come out, everyone was all chanting for him. Then he came out and gave his speech saying how we're all together mm-hmm. in all this. Mm-hmm. I'm stepping down temporarily, but I'm here. I'm we we have family, blood, all, we all did this and then like kind of skipped out of the ring, jumped down the stairs, high five yeah, people walking people, out. I was like, yeah. This man's just been stepped down CEO for what? And then and <laughs> then the like he cheering gets. him like whatever. Like yeah, so I think it's it's literally just him being like a power play and being like, yeah, I'm the boss. Or no, man, this is my company. I built this for like, the people love me. Like, he's literally being Homelander or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can do what I want. Um, but yeah, so apparently he had an affair with an employee um, and gave her a pay rise. Uh, yes. So she was working as... I think it was something in the legal department, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. And while he was having an affair with her, apparently he gave her a pay rise. Um, and apparently after the affair ended, well, so after he was done with her, he passed her, passed her on to John Doronitis, um, which is another like backstage guy. What's it, what was his name? That they, John, the rest of the name. Is, no, his um, is real name John Doronitis. Yeah. It was Johnny Cash or something. Like that. Johnny Ace. Johnny Ace, that's it. Johnny Ace. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I saw that name. I was like, who the hell is that? I googled it. Yeah. Oh, this guy. Um, so yeah, apparently after he was done with very passed on to, to, to Johnny Ace. I don't know if the ins and outs of how he passed it on to Johnny Ace, but he, that's apparently what happened. And then after he was done with her, they paid her off to keep her quiet, like two million pounds or something, two million dollars or something like that. Yeah. They paid her off to hush money. So yeah. he's being investigated for that because and then apparently when they started the investigation to this. They found out other instances of where he's paid hush money for other, other things. People, they haven't yeah. they haven't said what these other things are. It's other things. So it could be more or less just more affairs, or it mm-hmm. could be something more serious. Could be something less serious. I don't know. Are him and Linda still together? They're still married. They're still married. But they're not. But together, pe- people have assumed that they've almost never been together. Oh, okay. That's because I thought they haven't been together for a long time. But I know that she still has Linda McMahon. Yeah, I think I think they're one of them. That people would say or assume that they're a business marriage mm. and they, they've been a business marriage for like a long time. Okay. Where they, they probably loved each other once upon a time, but yeah. like, yeah, they probably like, oh, we'll stay together for the kids. Yeah. And then, and for it's, the image. And then it's, yeah, we'll stay together for the image. And mm. blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Um, Wrestling's in the mud, man. Wrestling is just ridiculous. Like, I'm like, how can you be like, I'm like, 
of course, sure, you could say uh, innocent until proven guilty or whatever. But still, it doesn't mean you need to be like singing a the man's theme tune and like high five yeah. and stuff. Like, yo, like, nah. Come it's on. the way he came out as well. And, like, I obviously he's an old man now and stuff. Like, and he obviously does his walking and all that. But mm. like, the way he skipped out of the ring, like, like, he was happy. He's so happy to be there and stuff. And I'm just like, he, he, hasn't, he, he hasn't appeared since WrestleMania. And it's like, what's, well, as far as I know anyway. And you just, He's just doing too much, sort of things. Like he's rubbing it in everyone's face. Like he's oh, he's definitely doing. That's that. what I mean. He's definitely like, doing that. He's like, I'm the I'm the king around here. Yeah, outrageous. But yeah, that's 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 what Vince McMahon's been doing. Um, another silly one, Gary Lineker. Oh, the black guy. <laughs> <laughs> like the foot. Yeah, all right. It's it's one of the ones where I'm like, Gary, I can kind of half get what you were trying to say, if I'm going to be nice to you, I can half get the point you were trying to make. It's just the word you, the words you chose were the wrong words entirely. Like the way he phrased it was just terrible. And like, you got to hold corn for that. I don't understand what point he's trying to make. He was saying that he's not a pale white person. So he got discriminated against for being tan. A, Darker than the average white person. Yeah. So, and because of the time that he grew up in, like, black people were catching hell, hell, hell. And yeah. he's saying, even me, as a white person, mm-hmm. I got some of that oh, I because I was darker than the average, white, the average person. white person. Yeah. And that's the point he, I, and this is just me being kind to him. He could have been, he could have just been like, no, I meant exactly what I said. I got racially <laughs> abused. <laughs> I'm like, so maybe you might want to double that. But that's the point that like, if I extrapolate like information and like put it into better language, I think that's the point you're trying to okay. make that he felt like he was bullied because of his skin tone and just because he was more tanned or a little bit darker than the average white person. I'm sorry, but I don't remember Gary Nicker ever being tanned even. Like, I feel like he's always... He, is, he, he does have more colour to him than, say, I don't know, Paige. I feel like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sh- Seamus. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like, like, I feel like, as he's got older, he kind of looks more tanned and stuff. But when he was a young, when he was a young but playing football... Mm. He look. He just looked like any white don. I had the, the no, big yeah, ears, abso- like goofy. Like. The thing is, I absolutely, I agree. Yeah. Like I, when I look at him, I don't see a tanned white man. No. Like even today, I don't see a tanned white man or whatever. I yeah. just see a white guy. Like, mm-hmm. but no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't look at him and be like, oh, he's Italian or he's Spanish or something. No, 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 no. But I'm not gonna take it. I'm I'm just gonna assume <laughs> that if what he said happened happened. It and I'm just gonna assume it happened, and I'm just gonna and I'm just giving him the better words to how what he's saying. I don't know whether it did or it didn't, but what he's saying happened. The better way to describe it is just, just you could say bullying for my skin tone. You could say I was discriminated against because I was I was light out. You were not racially abused, my guy. There's <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's no nothing to say that you were racially abused, but it's just yeah, it's just. City and the way he was like, oh, and I'm as English as they come. But it's like, yes, you are. Yes, you are fine. But like, when people are being racist, it's not about the fact that whether you're English or you're not English or whatever. Like, it's your race. <laughs> it's your race. Like, there's so, there's loads of. I mean, like Ian Wright, for example. He's I'm, as English I'm, as they he's, come. Yeah. What's his name? The John Barnes. John Barnes. <laughs> Oh man, he, he love a thing. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and he still is, has dealt with racial abuse in his in his time. So, yeah, Gary, just the words were all wrong. I'm, the only reason I'm giving him grace though is because I've seen him like say some sensible things over over some time. So I'm giving him a little bit of grace because I've seen him be sensible. Yeah, before. so he is quite sensible all the time on Twitter and things like that. Like he seems mm. to always have his ear to the ground and things. yeah. And like I've seen like when like um obviously people taking a knee for Black Lives Matter yeah. and stuff, like I've seen him on Twitter, like with people getting Larry up hyping up to him mm-hmm. and he and he's explained like in very in good in in a good way he's explained why he s- supports it, whatever, yeah. whatever. And I'm like and again, it's just his perspective. I might not agree with um absolutely everything he said, but I'm like, this is a sensible perspective f- 
considering you are who you are kind of thing mm-hmm. like me, me yells as a young black man like i'm obviously not gonna come to the same conclusions that multi-millionaire ex-retired footballer gary lineker white guy is going to but yeah I, I can look at him, what he said and say you know what for you yeah Fair enough. Yeah. But this, what you said here, was a howler, no matter who you are. <laughs> <laughs> like, just shocking. I can't, I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't let you off on that, like, just because of who you are. So, um, yeah, no, nah, just just foolishness. Complete foolishness. Yeah, I can't believe when I heard that. I was like, because you told me, I was like, mm. excuse me? <laughs> you're like, you're like, you're probably like, wait, Gary, 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 Gary. Yeah, like, yeah. like, you're like, match of the day, Gary, day. <laughs> Walker's Chris, Gary, Lynn. yes, this guy. Literally, he's sitting like he, he's sitting on the studio match today. It's him, Ian Wright, Alan Shearer, and he's the same as Alan Shearer. Like Alan Shearer, is, he he can never come out as that big British <laughs> interview. He's like, like he's as white as they come. Like it, just, it doesn't make any sense. But when you when you put it that way, okay, it, I see, I see what kind of what he was possibly getting at. What he was possibly like <laughs> yeah. I say, I don't know. He could literally double down tomorrow and say no. Don't was, don't take what I said out of context. I was racially, I was racially abused. I was racially <laughs> abused. <laughs> And, and I'm as English as they come. All those black people getting racial abuse, they're not English at all. <laughs> he, you know, he fully could come out and say that. <laughs> like, that'd be wild. He, he, he tried to get himself cancelled real quick. Yeah, though, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wild. <laughs> to be fair, I'm not all about black people saying they're English. Anyway, I said they're technically they're not English, they're British. Yeah, but but hey <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, it's like one of the ones that I can say it, you can't say it. <laughs> Like yeah, if he said it, then it's just it's an outrageous statement. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sorry, I'm not English. I was born here, my guy. <laughs> and then I'll be like, turn around and say, like, I ain't English, man. Bun this hellhole. <laughs> <laughs> Fire bun. Nice <laughs> uh, yeah. no, jokes. <laughs> um, what else? I think um, that you were talking about it on Thursday the uh, uh, Fubes engineer interviewed Nigel Farage. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you were talking yeah. about the drill stuff last week. Mm-hmm. Um, it was literally the exact conversation we were having yeah so i was really so i saw the clip on twitter and i was like what is happening here what is going on so oh yeah you weren't there when we had the conversation so um fumes the engineer you've heard of him right yes he went on to gb news which is like this right-wing news platform and sat down with nigel farage who i'm sure you're familiar with as well and the topic of discussion was uh drill music and i guess the messages in drill music and thing so let me see if i can even find it and we can play it i genuinely because thought it was fake like how it looked it was just is like it had like six cuts the farage and he's like reading off the drill um, lyrics and then it just cuts to him and he's sitting there like just kind of like yep that's yeah. that's what that's what they're saying. <laughs> so and the way it was cut together, it looked like it was yeah, it was a like fake. Two separate things. Cut yeah, together exactly. Because they're, they're not in the same room. Yeah, it just because <laughs> it didn't make any sense as to why Nigel Farage is interviewing this guy. So yeah. I was like, is this real? And then he yells to me about it. I was like, okay, wow, it actually was real. And I didn't see the full interview. I just literally saw that clip, and I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. I'm seeing like there's a short, short clip with ah oh, here. Here's the full thing. So it's about two minutes long. I, I don't know if we'll play the whole two two minutes, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's like, about you know the use of blades and knives. Oh, oh, whoops! My phone is being <laughs> technical difficulty. Yeah, let's try that again. Uh, ah, come on, come on, come on! This is why I don't like uh, technology these days, and it's mm. never, <laughs> never reliable. I mean, does draw music? It's uh, about you know the use of blood. Oh my word! I... It's the video. What's happening? I don't know. Is it just buffering or just? It's just kind of. And all the rest of it, and and you know, you know, I put Rambo blades in chests. Take that risk by CB. It's not good, is it? I mean, does draw music need to clean itself up? It's really my question to you. Draw music. Draw music's like an expression of freedom of speech. Like it's it's creativity. It's an opportunity for the younger generation to kind of make something of themselves. So when they're in the studio. When they're doing music videos and that, they're not doing whatever it is that other people will stereotype them for doing. Do you see what I'm saying? So it takes them away from potentially any kind of street activity, any kind of violence, X, Y, and Z, if that's what their life consumes of. But a lot of this is like, it's visual storytelling. So you're saying it's not real life? No. So this stuff, yeah. I mean, wait, you know, 
I know this is only a fraction of the words that are used that are like this, and I get that. I'm not trying to put the whole mm. genre in a bad light. I'm just saying, wouldn't it be better for drill music as a whole to get rid of some of this stuff? What me say that, though? <laughs> well, you know, you know, we're living in a society where what we say... We live. Mm. What do we cause offence to each other? It's become a much more sensitive issue than it's ever been before. You okay. know, I'm going to talk later on about a comedian. You know, okay. tells a joke and gets reported to the police, and it wasn't that bad a joke, really. And I'm just saying to you that I think some of this language is is it's almost encouraging violence. It's not though. It's not always encouraging <laughs> violence. Sometimes they're actually talking about making money and buying their mum a car and yeah, yeah. moving no, no, out of the that. areas. I get that. I get so that. we need to not focus on right. what, what it is that you guys want to focus on because it's like a it's like Joe is creative storytelling, and all they're doing is trying to use their talents to tell a story. It doesn't mean that they are the story. It doesn't mean that that's their everyday life. Do you see what I'm saying? No, because no, I get what you're saying. I understand a lot of it is about aspiration. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll cut it there. We'll cut it there. But um, but yeah, essentially, yeah, that is that is like a proper interview, like with Fumes Engineer Nigel Farage talking about drill music, whether it goes too far, and Fumes was defending the thing. He was like, "Yeah, like it's 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 just entertainment." I think there's a bit later on where he talks about how. I think Nigel Farage asks him, says to him, don't you think some of this goes too far? And he just goes, I think GTA goes too far. I think certain action movies go too far. And then he, he, he makes a point about the Fast and Furious. And he's like, yeah, we watch movies like the Fast and Furious where they're sp speeding down, up and down high roads and stuff. Mm. Like if I did that, I'd be in jail. Like, but we, no one, no one's like complaining about that too tough mm -hmm. because we all know it's entertainment. It's the same thing. That's, that's what he was saying there anyway. Um, but on the flip side, I saw his interview with Absav, and he, he was literally like, "But don't you think some of this is too far?" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Fumes the engineer did interview with Absav, and like, but like, I, but what I was saying to to Bez in our conversation is like, no, I I hundred percent rate it because I'm like, outside of the thing, hold it down, yeah, like defend def defend that when it's outsiders, you hold it down, but when you're talking internally. Like, yeah, sure, by all means, you can express your true feelings. Like, if you think someone's going too far and you think things need to calm down or whatever, whatever, tell that to the people directly inside, I hate this term, but inside the culture. To people outside, nah, mind your business, <laughs> it's fine. It's <laughs> fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, don't Just worry. Enjoy the entertainment. Especially someone like Nigel Farage. Like, come on. Like, no interest. Well, I, I don't even understand how that interview would happen. Like, yeah. why is Nigel Farage interviewing him? No idea. <laughs> what I'm like, I don't understand anything about that, what was happening there. Like, so baffling. Like, I was like, Nigel Farage and Fiends the Engineer are two people I never, ever, ever would have thought would be sitting down, like, having a conversation. Yeah. Like, for what? Who's benefiting from that conversation? <laughs> That's what I'm trying like, to I don't understand. Like, how's they even get in contact to even sort that interview out? It's like, it does like, Nigel Farage is like, to his people... Go get me that fumes guy. But the thing is, because like, I'm like, all right. Mr. The Engineer. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, so like, imagine fumes is trying to promote. I don't know what the interview was based around, but imagine he's trying to promote something. Mm -hmm. GB News' audience is not listening to whatever fumes the engineer is trying no. to promote for the most part. And then conversely, they're not listening to Drill either. So why do they actually... I think it was just like, um, probably... Uh, him trying to get just some knife crime. Sport. I think it's just knife crime. Oh, London, oh, okay. London's turned into Londonistan, <laughs> like, and they were just stabbing each other. I think it's all like to do with that. So I think that's yeah. probably why Nigel, Nigel Farage wants to have the conversation. So I kind of understand it from his point of view, but from Fumes the engineer's point of view, I'm like, I'm, I'm not entirely sure where he benefits from having that conversation. Mm. But fair enough. I mean, more power to him. And I think he, like I say, I think he carried himself very well. Um, if and, if and he Raj he understood, down. then he might he might have converted him. You know, he might might have a new support of drill. I doubt it. <laughs> new <laughs> support of drill, Nigel Farage. You Nigel know, doing some drill tunes, getting sturdy in the next. <laughs> oh my <laughs> word! <laughs> but to be fair, to be fair to Nigel Farage, um, and he's a waste man of the highest order. But <laughs> he, he, the way he was questioning was. I'm trying to choose my words nicely, uh, pr right, because I don't want to be too nice to him. <laughs> <laughs> but his line of questioning was reasonable. Yeah. I will say, I will put it that didn't way. Didn't necessarily feel like an attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like sometimes 
people get to when they're in their journalist bag and they have their belief or whatever, whatever, and they speak to someone with the opposite belief, they just come completely under the set thing. Mm-hmm. And I think Nigel Farage, obviously, you know what he thinks. He thinks drill music is absolutely going too far and it's yeah. to blame for all the violence that happens everywhere in the world. From mm-hmm. <laughs> but <laughs> literally, the way the way he actually phrased his questions and the way he had the conversation with him was reasonable. Yeah. Like, and he gave films the opportunity to get his his point of view across or whatever, like whatever. Cut him off and... which yes again Nigel Farage top waste man for a number of reasons <laughs> but on the evidence of this two minute clip he was fairly reasonable sometimes you have to like if someone the worst person you know does something um, reasonable it's, it's not always the worst thing in the world to at least admit that mm. so yeah yeah so fa- but fascinating stuff like, I'm like so interesting like yeah that's that's what i thought as well it's very interesting but like it's, it's always interesting to me when like music and politics like directly like overlap like i remember there was the whole thing with um when stormzy like headlined glastonbury a couple of years ago or mm-hmm. whatever and he got like everyone to say fuck boris or whatever yeah and they were like, everyone was melting down because that like, storms he should know his place oh well, <laughs> i didn't even see any backlash from it no no not really no literally daily mail type beat um oh, okay we're literally like ah oh, who does storms he think he is <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like it was literally just wild but yeah whenever there's that overlap between like politics politics and like musicians who aren't like overly political because obviously they are political musicians but when it's just like a uh, kind of average contemporary musician and like there's massive overlap it's like wow interesting mm. so you never know um, Nigel Farage might jump on the nets do, do a plugged in with fumes or something <laughs> <laughs> be like this is what you guys should actually be rapping about you just and get a ghost right and then just, <laughs> just start sending for like migrants and boats <laughs> Knowing him, that sounds like um, Manya skit, like skit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like, yeah, I'll back out the rumble and I'll burst your boat. <laughs> <laughs> you capsize. Yeah, man. Um, I'm trying, like, I'm trying to stay away from the actually serious, serious topics, though. Like, in terms of like the American thing with the Supreme Court. Like I'm trying to I'm trying to be like this is not the week to be yeah. like doing all that, like to be discussing that like not yeah. So if you don't know what's happened in America with the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade, um, I advise you to to look into it. It's disgusting, and I think that's all I will say about that. If you want to say anything quickly, no, nope. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, not great. Um. Did you not hear about the BT call center that has the food bank? I saw that, yeah. What do you think? Uh, outrageous. It's like it's just companies will do anything to just not pay their wages, fair salaries. It's like they 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 can't afford to eat, so rather than pay them more, they just create a food bank. I I fully I can't believe it. It's it's ridiculous because and the way food bank works is, as well in a lot of cases is that it's down to donations as yeah well. so it's not even like the companies the companies they're, they're like creating the space they're giving the space or whatever mm-hmm. and then they're like okay you people that you, you know who are richer give yeah, to the poorer, give to the poorer <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'll and us lot who are the richest lot of it out of it all will just be chilling we've given you a space for it mm. we've done our bit <laughs> we're like it's I'm crazy like, that's great and that's BT as well British Telecoms mm-hmm. like because what do BT even do now but then they've got like BT Sport and that kind of stuff haven't they got, and the internet yeah so, I, mean, like, I, I, I was thinking like no one has a landline yeah, anymore so yeah, what did BT even there for now but yeah they've got internet, internet and all that sort television of stuff. Yeah. yeah that kind of stuff um, and to be fair they own most of the internet as well yeah. like most like internet like a large amount of internet companies are running like renting their lines and stuff mm-hmm. so yeah because I think they're all lines are all there aren't they like mm-hmm. the, the ones on the ground and stuff yeah yeah man so people are saying like and it, this is one thing that I'm saying like this is it's fully like summer of discontent like I'm I'm here for it like just, everyone should just be pissed right now like and I've this whole thing with R&T Union going on strike like when I t- actually do you know I haven't I didn't even say but it took me I left work <laughs> at 5.30 on Tuesday and I didn't get home until 8 o'clock 
eight mm. o'clock. Cam, you're not even taking us in. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> I left work at 5.30 and I got here at eight o'clock. Oh, Jesus. How See, long does it normally take you? Uh, about 45 minutes. <laughs> so if I... I so you should have been home by quarter past six. Yes. <laughs> and I got home at eight o'clock because of the, uh, the, the tube strike that happened on that day that coincided with like the RMT union strike as well. And I'm pissed, but not at the strikers. I'm like, stop fucking him about. <laughs> just, it's just, oh my God. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Because I was waiting. So I had, so when the tube strikes strike, and I can't get a tube, I have to get the bus the whole way. Yeah. And one of the buses that I needed to get um, just wasn't coming. So I was waiting at the bus stop for like a good hour and 15, hour and a half. Ugh. Gross. Yeah. And it wasn't just yeah. me. It was, loads of, it was loads of people. And there was a whole thing with some kids trying to fight some drunks <laughs> and like it was a whole it was like I, it was a whole long day i was so when i got here i was so mad so angry because i was like this the time was unnecessary the drama that i had to witness was unnecessary like it's hot <laughs> it's one of the now days. yeah and now i need to like i need to quickly eat and then i don't have time to even enjoy my night i just need to eat um like wash out my plates and stuff and then probably get ready for bed f- to go back to work the next day like I was, I was so vexed, but I'm so happy that people are like wake. Well, I don't want to say waking up, but people are actually like organizing and striking for for better condition, working conditions, better pay, and stuff like that. Because I'm yeah. like, no, we can't. Don't allow people to mess you about, and don't allow them to say, ah, oh, because it's inconvenient for people that you can't do this and you can't do that. Da, da, da. No, it's meant to be. It's meant to be inconvenient. Because if mm. it wasn't inconvenient, it wouldn't work. No, listen. Yes. Didn't so, Boris like? What did Boris say? I saw something about him like he was cussing them sort of thing. Like of he was, course. Yeah. He was saying. He was saying that. Yeah. They're. Basically, yeah, they're making life difficult for the British people. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, they are. You lot are making life difficult you're for ma- the British people. Right, first of all, yeah, you're making life difficult for other people. And secondly, they are the British people. Yeah. Like, just because they're uh, a smaller group within the British people doesn't mean that they're what they need is irrelevant mm-hmm. to, the, to the needs of the rest of us. And then I'm just hearing about teachers are planning to strike in, all, in like September when schools come back. And mm-hmm. I'm like, do it. And like, um, just everyone, I'm just like it's all N- the government, NHS, NHS, it? NHS all, people, yeah. like That's all the whole like look government, even like um, barristers that work that are like prosecutors who work on behalf of mm-hmm. um, was it C- CPS Crown Prosecution Service, mm-hmm. like they're planning to strike because they make way less than their private um, yeah people who are private on the other side, so and they're like no, nah, just can't go on. Yeah, the legal aid rates are like because my mom's a sister and mm. she deals with legal aid cases and the rates like are just. Just they, and they, they're yeah. just taking them down every year sort of thing as well mm. it's like it's just outrageous yeah so like they're trying to strike and I'm like everyone everyone who can should I would I would absolutely say gen, general strike and that would be hell I'm not gonna lie to you a general strike would be hell to live through what's a general strike so a general strike is just where basically every union just strikes mm-hmm. um, or at least every union uh, that's a government that for a government institution okay. so that would be postmen that would be yeah. bin, the bin men that would be um teachers like i say nhs workers um bus drivers train drivers um or bus and train stuff like not Even drivers, police, so that police as, well. Yeah. as well um like I say, it would be it would be an absolute whatever day that landed Purge. on, or <laughs> <laughs> whatever whatever day that landed on is it would be a day to just stay at home and not the world do anything. Stop, yeah, yeah, Don't because there's your your nothing, that nothing's nothing's happening not that anything, day. Yeah. You're not going, you're not going anywhere because there's no transportation. Like and yeah, like if anything happens, there's no ambulance to come and get mm-hmm. you. Like. It's, it's all peak. it's all peak. So if you burn down your house, it's peak. Yeah, like yeah, that would be the day to just sit indoors and do nothing. Just sleep. Yeah, just lie in bed. Everyone sleep. Move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, no. We I think it's something that we need because um, I think for too long the government have been taking the piss, and yeah. I think companies are taking the piss as well. But the government are absolutely taking the piss. The companies mm-hmm. are incentivized to take the piss because that's capitalism. But the government shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. At least. So. And they're just increasing our taxes and everything and then still taking the piss. And it's just like, they're not even like 
despair, despair it to at least the people who are yeah every everyone is struggling teachers teachers are working long hours for terrible pay mm-hmm. like and people people always forget about like teachers do so much outside of their hours as well like for example my mum's um my mum's not even a teacher like that she works in a nursery and she, she'll be like taking so her free time to get stuff for the nursery mm-hmm. like um cam you'll know this obviously as well where like just even even like little things where like she'll buy stuff and be like oh, i'm gonna take this into for the nursery for the children to pay with or like i remember back in the day when we used to have like old phones and stuff mm. she would just take it in and like, oh, i'm gonna give it to the children to pay with they don't have any like like you know how you would have like toy phones and stuff yeah, like yeah. that she's like oh no they don't actually have that so if you're not going to be using this phone i'm going to take it so the children can yeah narrow away to each other pretend yeah. and like have fun and, <laughs> and it's like and she's like yeah no because it's good for their development to do things that they see or to like play with things that they see adults using mm-hmm. so they can kind of develop a, a relationship with it. yeah so it's not not like all day every day but like so they can whatever and i'm just like and i just know for older children as well that just becomes more yeah like i've heard of children i've heard of teachers buying like felt tip pens and stuff so they so their kids could use it in class because they didn't have any felt tip pens mm. they, they were, the school didn't have any felt tip pens so they went to the wa smith and they bought like a, a couple of packs of felt tip pens so their kids could use it for their art class or whatever like and they can't expense that sort and of you thing. can't i don't yeah i don't think that school have any kind of that expenses yeah. really and yeah and yeah so i'm just like i feel like teachers is one of them jobs where yeah you do so much outside of your hours and I think it's one of the ones where people don't realise. Like, every everyone kind of expects, you know, the the lawyer to, like, work long hours, work, mm. whatever, whatever. And I think people don't really deep that teachers do it as well. Yeah. Well, even marketing and stuff like that, you don't, never do, they never do it in school hours. They, or maybe they have, like, a, a break period or something where they don't have any classes they could do it. But, yeah, like they, it's normally after school. After school, like, school yeah. 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 Like, so they're going to strike. Or they, sh- they should strike. And I'm like, yeah. Even like NHS workers, they've had, they've gone through hell through this pandemic and stuff. And like, and they got claps yeah. for them. They got, <laughs> yeah, round of applause. And then like, and during the time, same time, they were taking the piss out of them. I remember there was a story a while back, like, it might have been a year ago now, where NHS workers were no longer getting free parking hospitals. Yeah. So they had to pay to pay to park at work. And people were like, oh, well, I have to pay to park at work. You, I, and, that's, and that's one of the things I hate I'm sorry to go off on a little bit of a rant but I hate when people say shit like that because I'm like hold on a minute because you're suffering does not mean other people have to suffer that's such bad mind <laughs> that's such bad mind behaviour to say well I have to pay to park a work yeah. no you shouldn't have to pay you should be annoyed that you have exactly. to pay like, like your work should provide if you need to drive into your job or whatever mm-hmm. your work should provide the parking yeah. as far as I'm concerned yeah I swear, like, um, NHS workers, they have to pay now, though. They do they, have they, to pay Because they, yeah. they paused it for a bit, didn't they? And they, mm-hmm. they yeah. Just, just crazy. And hospital parking is not cheap. It's not cheap at all. It's ridiculous. And they work, and they work stupid shifts. And they, and they have to deal with a lot. They have to deal with a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just like, oh, man. I saw, like, it was a um, doctor. She posted her wage. Um, yes, at 1700 yeah. was her take home. Yeah, think. and... Like after taxes and that, it was like sixteen fifty or something. And she was basically saying that um, it's her job is your life is in her hands. Like if she's yeah. not working, people are dying and stuff. Like it's such an important job and like a high and mentally taxing job and stuff yeah. like that. And then the take I home didn't. for what she was was quite. A, I think it was a, a junior. junior doctor or something. Yeah. yeah, but still, it's not the point. Yeah, and like she was say, as she did say as well, she was like, if I'm doing a procedure on you. The last thing you want is for me to have in the back of my mind. How am I going to eat? (laughs) Yeah, how am I going to eat? Like, you want me to, like, for me to do this job, like, I need to have my full brain power to be able to, Mm -hmm. like, take care of you adequately, like, properly. And if I've got, like, additional stress because I'm not, I'm struggling to make ends meet Mm -hmm. and I've got that in the back of my mind. Like that could affect my performance. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, absolutely. And that's the one of the, the last jobs in the world. Mm-hmm. You want people having like their performance affected by yeah. stuff. Like, yes, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's gross. But I'm fully, I fully support a strike. Like, I'm like, just whoever. I'm like, if you feel like you're being mugged off, 
then and your you look around and your colleagues also feel like they're being mugged off, then yeah, strike. If you're just one person and your colleagues are actually like, do you know what, to be honest, we have a good then maybe it's not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's not a good idea. But <laughs> but if if you and all your colleagues are like, nah, they're they're having us on, then I would say yeah, absolutely like walk out. I reckon like Companies like McDonald's and stuff like that, they'll start striking as well because they're min- they're all on the minimum wage and the minimum wage is really low and mm-hmm. with everything going up, if they're not going to increase the salaries for them, then yeah, I'm sure they're going to start striking and stuff as well. I can't remember what it was, but it was one company that recently did something for their workers, like in the wake of all this like train strike stuff. Mm. I can't remember what it was. I think it was like a retail company of some kind. Oh, they ah, oh, I remember what it was. They gave their workers two thousand pounds. They just like. They gave some of the workers just two, all of their like workers two grand. I can't remember what company it was, mm. um, but it was like a thing where they were like, "Oh, because of the cost of living crisis, here's just here's just two grand each, like mm. just extra." And people were like, "This is because of other people are striking, and they know that their workers are discontent. So yeah. they need to, so they, and they do don't something. want them to strike. So you know, what, we'll give you all two grand, yeah, like just to get you f- to tide you over." And I'm like, "Hey, I could I nice do that." that. Yeah, that's, yeah, must be nice. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and tax takes most of that away anyway. It's just like yeah. slapping the face. Oh, so so disappointing. So, so depressing. Mm. But I'm like, it's I'm like, yeah, strikes are massively inconvenient. But the people you should be mad at are not the strikers. It should you should be mad at their employers. The reason they're striking. The reason they're striking. And a lot of times, when you actually look into the reason why they're striking like you would be sympathetic and you would not like you would know if you were in that position you would not have it yeah like unless other than these people who are like well i have this too <laughs> and, I'm like, and like yeah you're just allowing yourself to be mugged off yeah but the only difference between you and them is you are allowing yourself you're to be lying. mugged off <laughs> and you want them to be mugged off too because yeah, you're because being mugged off <laughs> so such backwards you're i'm in a hole join me <laughs> <laughs> Don't help me, don't give me an idea to climb out. Mm. Jump in the hole with me. <laughs> That's, it's literally crabs in a barrel, um, barrel mentality, isn't it? Like, yeah. Like you can't what, climb out. Like you can't, if, you climb, if you're climbing out, I'm not going to follow you. I'm just going to knock you down. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. Oh, hey ho, hey ho. Um, what else is going on in the world? Um, there, is, there is more stuff. It's like, do we actually want to talk about it? Uh, as Ezra Miller, he's always in some Ezra Miller. Yeah, he's Ezra in Miller. a lot of drama. He, he's an idiot. He's he's he's. I fair. think they're reshooting. They're, are they doing the Flash? Or are they reshooting it now? I have no idea. Because I saw, yeah, I saw that, and um, they're looking for new actors for it. But I'm not sure if they're like that's for after this movie, or they're doing this movie still, and then mm. after that, then they'll replace him. But yeah, he's 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 absolutely finished. Yeah, he's um, yeah he's he's done way too many things like. <laughs> like every other month he's he's done something I mean another story come out of him every other week and it's just like but I haven't seen much people trying to cancel him though like Will Smith sat he's not, he's, not like, he's not a big enough star he's I a men- he's an absolute menace but he's not that big of a celebrity true I guess but still I would have thought like he's he's a celebrity enough that I would have thought he people from what he's doing people would be on his case yeah, yeah, Will Smith yeah. slapped Chris Rock and ever obviously Bob, he's a he's a huge star, he's a much bigger star than him. But like yeah. for what he did, compared to what he's done, it's like it's just this. Yeah, I, I would have thought he'd get there'd be a bit more hate for him for what from what compared to what I'm seeing. Yeah, nah. I, yeah, I don't even have anything to to say about him. Honestly, he's just uh, just he's doing a lot. He needs to be just he needs to be stopped. He's a menace. Um, <laughs> Truly, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I don't know. I think I personally think we could we could probably just go straight into what we're watching. Yeah, uh, I, I don't really think we have. There's other things to talk about, but I, I think we, like we said, we'll keep this one short and breezy. We already we're already down. We don't need a, a deep depressing. Yeah, tone. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, don't need to talk about how the government are trying to change the human rights laws in the UK. Don't need to do all of that. In the UK as well. well. Where else? I thought it was in the US they were... So the US is the abortion thing. In the UK, they're trying to change human rights. I didn't know that. So um, essentially, the UK is a signatory to 
and this is this is me and my tired brain trying to remember what it what everything is so if i get stuff wrong i'm sorry but if you if you google it you'll find all the correct information but this is what i understand as of right now while i'm groggy the uk is a signatory to a a uh, European treaty, um, which is the European Convention on Human Rights or something like that. Mm. And part of that is um, you sign up to be in the part of the European Court of Human Rights as well, which I don't know if you heard, but you know they had their first flight that was meant to go to Rwanda the other day. Mm-hmm. And one and person was on it or something. Or yeah. So it didn't fly. It didn't fly because you that, that court that I just said, um, they basically said, that no, they said they had to be blocked um, on the basis of w- one particular person. Uh, they needed to check that he wasn't at risk or something. I can't, I can't remember that specifics, but the court basically said that I can't fly. And since then, Boris, Pretty Patel, etc., etc., have been like, oh, European courts ruining our t- t- life. Brexit means Brexit again, the type beat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they're trying to basically scrap or leave the like um, the treaty that they signed on human rights with other European nations, and then basically do a, a UK uh, legislation that codifies human rights. But the way they want to do it, and how they want to write it, is so much. It's 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 enshrining a lot less of your rights. Mm. So what it would basically be like, so if we leave what we have right now and they push through what they want to push through, we would lose rights okay. because they, they're not going to go as far as what we're already in. So we're going right. to leave this one thing and then they're going to put back something else. But what they're putting back is not as much. So okay. we would essentially be losing some of our human rights in this country. Right. Um, there was a whole, I've, I saw an article that had a whole breakdown of like literally what they what parts then they would likely not come back it's just mm-hmm. it's just bad i'm like oh my god and yeah, maybe like, we can deep dive into it another time i think yeah maybe next episode if, if we remember but um but yeah that's happening right now which is which is fun <laughs> definitely fun but yeah like i say today is not the day to talk about that <laughs> so anyway lads what are we watching what are we watching um i've, I've been watching a lot this week actually um, the last two weeks, uh, so I watched. I started watching Mario Academia again today, just because I couldn't find think of what to watch. So I started watching that again. Um, watched. Uh, I watched Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness. Finally, what did you think? It was decent. It was a like it was an okay movie. It, was just, it wasn't mad as I think as you two both said in the last few, few episodes. Like yeah, it wasn't mad at all. There was I thought it was. Very underwhelming with the whole madness that went between like two universes mm-hmm. in the whole movie, and then yeah, Scarlet Witch was the enemy, <laughs> and it's just like, it just... and obviously the whole big reveal of Doctor Xavier coming in, which is him just there for a couple seconds and then getting his head snapped. <laughs> it was <laughs> yeah. like it was a bit. It was yeah. It was very disappointing from what they, the trailers and stuff had. Thought there'd be a bit more to it, but yeah, it was it was a decent movie though. From what I thought, thought it was okay. One thing I wanted to say about it is I feel like the way it was edited was kind of mad in terms of, it just felt weird. Like, mm. it just felt weird and different to anything anything else that I've seen from Marvel recently. It was like, it was, it was me and Yell me and me were speaking about this and it's like kind of horror-y. Like, um, yeah. the way like, there's like kind of jump scares and like how Wanda was like kind of dashing yeah. around chasing people and stuff like that. It we also felt kind of whimsical as well at the same time like it felt kind of darker but also kind of more whimsical than other stuff oh yeah like the the scene where they're hollering like um, hurling treble clefs at each other was absolutely <laughs> yeah. very whimsical <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> right, it was, yeah like I say it was a right it just was I don't think it was what we were promised no but it wasn't bad like it was uh, it was definitely I wouldn't have been mad if I watched it in the cinema, but like, it, yeah, I'm I'm not mad. I waited either, sort of thing. Um, and then I started watching Eden Zero, uh, which is just Fairy Tale two point oh. Basically, it's literally mm. Fairy Tale. Like, I'm just watching it, and, like, just in my head, I'm like, this is Natsu. That's Ezra. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's technically three point oh of whatever the first thing. Yeah, I think I think like. So from, I watched Rave Master and I feel like it was, there was only a few characters who were quite similar in 
to fairy tale. Whereas this one, I feel like he's just taken everyone from fairy tale <laughs> and put them with different names. Even yeah. like the main Lucy slash Rebecca. Rebecca's a character in fairy tale, but like, oh, for real? yeah. So like Lucy's friend is called Rebecca or something, <laughs> and then like, yeah, they've got like the. Um, Jalal kind of guy who's the one who's got this, the thing down his face who's literally the same as in fairy tale. It's just yeah. they've he's literally taken everything. And in all three of his works as well, as well it has Tiarati and Sace as well. Yeah, yeah. Really? Like, yeah. yeah. Well, this guy's lazy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> he, needs to, he needs to be stopped. He's got the formula, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, but it's not it? even good stuff. It's not even great. It's like all right. Yeah, it's content. okay. It's decent. <laughs> like when I say yeah, when they said they're racist, I was like, they're racist as well, isn't it? Like they've come back as well, like yeah, and Plues in all of them, the little yeah. white pant, dog thing. yeah, dog thing. Um, but it's okay. I've been watching that, um, and then what else I've been watching? I've watched. I watched a couple of movies. I watched that movie with Kevin Hart and Will, Woody Harrelson, uh, the man from Toronto. I watched that yesterday. It's quite good, quite funny. And I watched Enola Holmes, which was good. I watched Stranger Things, the new season, which is, that was really good. I quite like that. And, um, yeah, clock's about to slot, clock, my new playthrough of Cyberpunk. Yeah, um, but how did you, how did you feel about it now? It was, like, you were like, all right, so before you got the game, you were hating big time. Then you got the game, you were like, it's all right. And so what were you it's, saying it's, now? It's not, so when I played it, it was good. Like, I still don't like it. Like, it's first person. Mm. Still don't like the drive. Like the driving, obviously, when I realised you can change the third person, that made it quite a bit better. But mm. I still think the driving is a bit pants. Um, but it's a fun game. Like, it's definitely fun. I liked doing the sword playthrough. It was just crazy. Because, yeah, the last mission was just so easy. It's ridiculous. Because, like, obviously, I remember the first time I played it, you know, I had guns and stuff. Yeah, I had kind of hiding behind yeah, cover and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Whereas, like, this time, when you go into the lobby, and it's just a whole bunch of them run out of the elevator, just ran into the middle and just sliced all of them up <laughs> about three, about before the um, commentary had stopped I'd killed all of them already <laughs> it, was like, <laughs> it was like yeah it was quite easy Adam Smasher was again quite easy it's more difficult because you have to go close range and just but he kind of just stands there and just lets you hit him, you him yeah. so it's quite easy you haven't even played that far have you no oh my god <laughs> but um, yeah that's pretty much it from the top of my head I can't I'm sure I've, I've watched quite a bit more but I can't remember now what, what have been watching? Uh, so I've, I think I've just only just been watching um, Scrubs, bang, bang. Mm. which has been, yeah, I, I haven't watched Grey's since I started watching Scrubs because Scrubs is just more enjoyable. Have you seen Scrubs before? No. Oh, you haven't? Oh, okay. Which season are you on now? I'm on season three or four, I think. Okay. Have you seen um, Scrubs? No. Nah. You man are missing out. Scrubs yeah, are like, I used to, Scrubs I used to, I like, saw, like single episodes on I was just gonna say, yeah, yeah, I saw like episode here and there, but I never watched it properly. No. I got the box set, Scrubs. That's how much I liked <laughs> Jeez, it. Right. But I just got the box set. <laughs> Crazy. Scrubs is great. And yeah, I'm on season four. And then um I also I started watching Lucifer from the beginning again. Oh swear. Yeah. Copycat. <laughs> Not copycat. I only I because I think last step. Mm -hmm. uh, Bez told me that it's all on Netflix now, so I wanted to watch it already, but it wasn't on Netflix. Yeah, it was like episode four, season four and five was on Netflix. Yeah, same. So I was like, I was waiting for it to come, and then he told me, and I was like, okay, cool, time to watch that's it. Why, that's why I was watching it, you know. That's why you're a copycat. No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> you you didn't even like it. I told you about it when it first started, and you didn't want to watch it. I watched the first episode, and I wasn't sure where it was going to go. And I kind of, I get the vibe. I still get the same vibe from it. Um, where it's like, I do, I find it kind of generic. I feel like they could, they, I feel like they could do more with the fact that he's the devil in terms of when they're doing the procedural episode, like the, mm. the case of the day or whatever, like don't even know what I'm saying. Whenever they're going through their case of the day, I feel like he could be more the devil in those moments. I feel like other than his, so tell me what are your desires? He really, he's just really just there. And like, he's just an angry partner. <laughs> he's funny though. He's like, <laughs> no, he's funny. He's definitely funny. But like that whole devil, the part that he's the devil yeah. doesn't come across in that. It only comes across. He's when not he's, like evil. Yeah, it only comes across. He, I mean, he doesn't even need to be evil. I feel like he should display more like superpowers and stuff yeah but I mean kinda, and, it, and it only it, I feel like his devil stuff only comes about when he's around the Menadil and Maze and 
Like then it's like, oh yeah, you're the devil. I forget. Yeah. <laughs> but like when he's with the detective, it's just like he could literally just be a mentalist. It's like, but then he like he just like walks into like gunfire and stuff like that as well. Like it'll be like something happening. He'll just kind of walk in the middle, just pick someone up by the throat, with one hand. Like yeah. it's like, he'll... <laughs> but he, that's like so sparingly. Though. Yeah. True. And it's just like because especially because they nerfed him when she's around, mm-hmm. or at least in the, the part I'm at when the detective's around, he's he's nerfed. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah, and I, and I get it. They did that because they didn't want every episode to end up with him just walking into gunfire and lifting people up. Because <laughs> like, then there would be no stakes. Yeah. So I get it, but still. Um, so yeah, I'm watching... Did you, sorry, did you finish? Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, well, so I'm watching Lucifer as well. Um, just finished season two because um, I was trying to take it a bit slowly, so going on season three. Um, what else have I watched? I've been watching... I... I can't remember if I mentioned this last episode or not, but I'm watching Ayo Ashi as well, the, the football enemy. Um, still, still not sold on it at all. Did I be up to date yet? Um, uh, up to date, yeah. Episode, well, up to date in English. Episode nine, I think. Episode nine, yeah. yeah. Not really sold on it, honestly, but hey ho. Yeah, like the we'll last keep... man's learning how to control the ball and pass so and then <laughs> So I really think. I'm like, there's, there's just, I'm like, there's no way in hell that you would be at that level of football and you can't kill it about controlling the ball and yeah. <laughs> passing it in one motion <laughs> yeah this is, I'm like I think this that's the difference where like watching Kuroko was one thing because like, I've never played Kuroko at any at any I've, not Kuroko I've never basketball. played basketball at any level of real like I played basketball obviously but not at any level of real skill yeah like whereas football obviously we've grown up playing football and yeah like, I'm like wait you're how old and you can't do what <laughs> Come on. and you're what and playing, you watch football you're you watch football and, and you're academy. playing for the junior you're at uh, actual football academy yeah, like a junior's, he's literally like playing for Arsenal youth. Yeah, like a, he doesn't know how to trap the ball. Like, it's not anyone just walks up and walks into a youth academy. You got yeah, to, you got a trial for it and get in. So yeah, and he doesn't know how to trap the ball or uh, his touch is touch of a menace. He's got natural skill. He's, he's got that natural, got that dog in him. <laughs> <laughs> got that dog in him. <laughs> All right, yeah, and I mean, obviously, it's anime. It's not going to be that like, super realistic, but I just find it funny. I was like, "This is what this is what you have to learn." <laughs> yeah, like, no, even anything more like advanced. a bicycle kick or like yeah. something like that you wouldn't see really often, or like some over the around the world or something like something, that. Something, yeah. Like, yeah, like, well, like I don't know, man. Like, or it could, or it could just be more like outrageous touch. Like, he might have, he might have, like they're just doing like short, short passes. <laughs> like, if it was like a pass coming from like you know, t- t- 30 yards away or whatever, like in the air, where yeah. he like, has to take it down. Like, I can be like, okay, cool. That, that that takes some practice. Like, not to say that this doesn't take practice, but it's something you practice when you're like six years old. <laughs> 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 like, I haven't played football in time and I'm sure I could do what he's doing right now. Yeah. But hey-ho. Um, what else have I been watching? Oh, I've been watching today um, and yesterday, I've been watching The Boys uh, season three. And Lord have mercy. Have you caught up yet? Or? So I'm halfway through the episode uh, six, which is the Today's episode. Oh, yes, episode. Yeah, so, um, yeah, half of it's just all mad. It's all, it's all, all mad. It's, it's, a re- it's such a good show. It's such a good show. Like, I, I don't know how. It just, don't say, do you, do you, I'm not, obviously not, don't say where you, where you, could, where do you without spoiling it, because Cam's not watched it yet, but where do you think it's going to go? Like, do you have any idea where you think it's going? Or it just could be anything at the moment? Because I, I literally have no, I can't, I literally couldn't guess where it's going to go. I feel like it could be anywhere. It, I feel like they're trying to set out some kind of Royal Rumble. I feel, yeah. I feel like the final, and that's a, I feel like the final fight is going to be, I guess it kind of was like that last year as well. But, um, or last season. Yeah. But I feel like it's going to be like a melee with like just, just different, all the heroes. just different groups yeah. Yeah, of people. And I feel, and not to say that they're all, all going to be like completely opposed, like some people might be on the same, it's similar kind of team or whatever, mm-hmm. or have like similar objectives. But I think it's going to be like, like Homelander, probably Homelander by himself. <laughs> yeah. To be fair. <laughs> I was going to say Homelander and those people, but no, yeah, probably just him. him. Then, that other guy, um, Soldier Boy. Damn. Okay, okay you do that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I knew about him from before the season even started. All right, fair enough. Well, yeah, I think him, he's going to be a factor in it. But I think, the, I, I think the boys are going to be their own little clique. And I think Starlight 
is going to be her own little... I think she's going to have her own little group as well. Mm. And I'm try, I'm not sure what side of it. I'm just trying to figure out where Huey's going to land. Because I feel like... Spoilers, but I feel like he, at the moment he's leaning towards the boys and... Away from Star away, away from his missus. But I feel like... Just the way they're going to write that, I feel like he might come back around. And I've, but their objects is obviously going to be very similar yeah. anyway, so it it doesn't really matter. But I think, but the way but I think it will affect the relationship. Yeah, it will either, it will affect his relationship with Butcher and Starlight. Which yeah. Is, so if he's with Starlight, his relationship with Butcher is going to be offensive. If he's with Butcher, his relationship with Starlight is going to be offensive. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how that how that falls. Mm-hmm. It's good though. It's very. Good. It's, it's, it's very good. very good. It's very very good. Um, how many episodes is it going to be? That's what I was just gonna ask if any either of you know. But oh, no, what was last season? Was it ten or eight? I think it was eight, if I'm not mistaken. It might be eight again. So Seven. I think it's six. Yeah, six so far. But like to be fair, when you watch it, like today's episode had moments in it where it felt like a finale. I don't think it is because it's only six, uh, to be fair, a lot of shows are six episodes nowadays. But which is annoying as hell. Yeah. Yeah, I watched Kenobi. I watched Kenobi as well. That's one thing I watched. I think there's. Oh, so yeah. Oh, we'll talk about that. But I think there's gonna be seven episodes. Seven, there's one more left. That's what it says on Google right now, yeah. Oof, yeah, it did, like, today's episode felt like a lot happened where it was, like, it could have been a finale sort of thing. So, yeah, probably ramping up. Um, yeah, I watched Kenobi as well, finished it as well. Um, what did you think? It was good, it was good, it was fun. It was like a... Fun little yeah. run through. Yeah, it, it should, I, I, don't, I don't like the six episodes. I hate six episodes of shows, it's just too short. Yeah, like I was like, I want more. Yeah. Like I want more. But um, it was good though. Like it was because um, I was just thinking about like Darth Vader and stuff. Obviously, like he just he just mad strong. Because didn't he like how did he go from like he was because the tie was like ten years different. He must be training all that time. Mm-hmm. But he's like yeah, he's just crazy strong when you think about mm-hmm. it with everyone. Mm-hmm. And like then, I was just gassed. Like the the, the fights were just gassed. Was, I was yeah. just like this is like because we've never really seen. In live action, we've never really seen Darth Vader go hat. No. Like, like have a proper fight in live action. Like, we've seen him in the old days doing the slow... Yeah. Because they just kind of... <laughs> yeah, they couldn't. They didn't have, like, the fight choreography that we have to do yeah. in the special effects and stuff. Like, this was really, really cool to get to see Darth Vader go crazy. It like. is weird as well, because he's in such a clunky suit, but he just there, just like... But, he, but, he, but he kind of moves his movements is kind of clunky as well yeah. because it's a suit the way the suit he, like, he gets out of the way of things absolutely Yeah. but his, his movement the way he moves is kind of stiff anyway yeah. it wasn't like he didn't like, look like a like, yeah Obi-Wan yeah. when Obi-Wan was moving about he was moving in much more like, like athletic fluidly ways, yeah like, like, fluidly yeah whereas Darth Vader was more like his proper just stiff form <laughs> <laughs> but he was so gangster like when he, he's just stopping like um, the ship just, bruv, I was like, <laughs> bloody hell, mate. Man, just so the ship was trying to take off. Cam, sorry, spoilers. Ship was trying to take like a big ship as well. Not like one of them one person ships, one of them big, bigger than the um, Millennium Falcon or whatever, like a big ship yeah. full of people trying to take off. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, blood clot. You know what I mean? Because, like, yeah, not everyone does that with the force. Like, yeah. Man just held that down, and then when he was no, but what I was gonna say is when he was stopping like um, lightsabers with the force, like, yeah, man yeah. just trying to swing at him, and he's, he's just like, going. Mm. <laughs> like he fought a whole lightsaber battle without even drawing his lightsaber. Didn't just, 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 that, was, that was so sick when he took the thing and snapped it and like, come on, then, let's go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he, like, he snapped his own. No, he um, he, the he, girl had like a double one and it had like it kind of spun and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so she was there standing with it spinning. And he just kind of stopped it and. Then, took it off her and then snapped the two lights like, gave, gave it her, her one and then said let's go yeah. <laughs> so he was like he was proper toying with her but it was wild nah, it had me tempted to watch the next three though like the, the sequels yeah I don't know not the sequel the originals the first so three four five six oh you so you've been watching in chronological order yes yeah, so I watched one two three and then I watched Kenobi so now it would be four five six wouldn't it yeah yeah well watch watch like um, watch like Rogue One I've yeah. seen Rogue One. That was rubbish. I feel like. What? That was the one in what? Like that's the one, the second one, isn't it? Of the new ones. No, no that was a standalone no, 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 one. standalone movie. Yeah, but it was like in so the the first one, the new first one came out. The mm-hmm. 
Force, the Force Awakens. Yeah, then it was Rogue One, wasn't it? And then another Possibly, one. Possibly, I don't know. But it, it's not tied to it at all. So. Yeah, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't think that one was that good. That is quite possibly the best Star Wars movie since, I don't know. Ben Hunter Menace. <laughs> <laughs> that movie was banging, Sibes. That movie was the best Star Wars movie to come out. Probably since like the tr- original trilogy, honestly, like that that movie as a standalone was great. So what is I can't remember what happened to it. It's the one where like she's the daughter of the scientist. Yeah, it's got like the Mexican dude in it as the, the ship um, pilot. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's got um, what's his name? I can't remember his name. The uh, martial artist guy, and he's blind. He's a um, Chinese guy. Um, and he was saying I'm one with the forces The forces with me Or something And he kept saying that Nah I probably can't remember that movie I thought watch I it, watch it. When, watch when did it. it come out Like 2014 or something Something like that And so basically That would be next after this Because uh, okay. that one Is set right before episode 4 Right okay Because So you see an episode There was a layer right in that one At the end or something or Yes she, Yeah And Darth Vader's in it At the end as well Which is gassed <laughs> as well um, So it basically Yeah so it basically ends where episode four begins. Oh, okay. So it's what yeah, the ending of episode the beginning of episode four is when Darth Vader is boarding a ship yeah. and he captures Leia and blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And what it yeah, it, Rogue One ends with it, like them getting on a ship. Okay. Because what they get in Rogue, their whole mission in Rogue One is they get the plans to the Death Star. Yeah. And then the the Death the plans help them come up with the plan to destroy the Death Star in episode four. Okay. And it's yeah, it's just dope. And then where's Solo then? Because that's Solo a prequel, is, isn't it? yeah. Well, Solo is like a prequel, so Solo is probably um, maybe now as well, isn't it? Yeah, or maybe maybe before Obi Wan, maybe a bit before, before Obi Wan, but it's around that time frame anyway. I don't think I've seen Solo. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't remember if I watched that or not. I don't think I even saw the last movie, like the the finale one. I don't think I even watched that. Ah, you didn't miss much. That's why I didn't, because I did the new three, I was like, I didn't like them, and I don't think I watched that one either. I would say, Solo was fun. It wasn't anything special, but it was fun. Mm. Rogue One, gangster. But I would say, watch one to four, uh, four to six again. Like, I tried, and I got distracted, so I stopped. Mm. But I was enjoying it when I was doing it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've, I've watched the first three now, and then I watched um, Kenobi. So yeah, I might as well watch, just go, just go, just keep going. Mm. Um, what was I going to say what else did I watch oh I watched The Man of Tai Chi just a movie on Netflix um, yeah it was good stuff it was good stuff I was I was pleasantly surprised I thought it was going to be nonsense it's like one of the movies where you just see it and you're like eh, I'm not going to do anything else I'm mm-hmm. just banging the sun so I thought it was going to be hot nonsense but it was actually it was actually good um, Keanu Reeves is in it as the villain okay um, and yeah, Keanu. I like Keanu Reeves because he's he's like in John Wick and in The Matrix and anything. He's like one of the only like action stars where like y- you can actually show him doing like where, whatever's going on the screen. You can show him doing it because everyone else you see their stunt double. Yeah. If they, if they filmed it the way that you f- they filmed Keanu Reeves, mm-hmm. you've seen their stunt double. Because, yeah. But they can get like proper up close and personal with him like doing like kicks and stuff because mm-hmm. he, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's very cancer. Like, even, and that's why John Wick's so hard for me because, like, the way they film certain things, it's just like, you, you can't film that. Like, with just any guy, you can't film that because they don't know what they're doing. And the way he knows, he knows what he's, his ways around a gun. Mm-hmm. He knows his way around, like, martial arts because he's that he trained martial arts. So he's, he's just yeah. cancer. Proper, proper guy. Um, yeah, it's a good movie, good fight choreography because I think it's set in um, China. Um, so it, it's, I mean, it's essentially like a Kung Fu movie, but no, the main fight, the main character's fight style is Tai Chi. Mm-hmm. So I guess it's a Tai. That's weird. Like, cause I feel like, so like, I feel like I've watched Kung Fu movies, yeah, or in air quotes, Kung Fu movies, where the character's not even using Kung Fu. Yeah, so I feel like it's actually in movies, when you think about it, it's actually rare they actually use Kung, Kung Fu. Kung Fu, yeah. Like, I'm just deep in it. I'm like, yeah. 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 Ah, that's probably the correct term. Yeah, being martial arts movie. movie. Yeah. That's probably that, that the more correct term. I think Kung Fu movie's probably a bit derogatory at this point then. Probably, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, it's a martial arts movie, and the main character uses Tai Chi, which is not really an offensive style. Mm. So it's quite interesting. So basically, um, I doubt you're ever going to watch it, but the plot to the movie is more or less like he's training with his master, and he's like, he's just got so much aggression. His master's like, Tai Chi is not about power. Like, so they're like sparring or whatever. And like, he's trying to remind him that it's not about power, it's about going with the flow, using, you know, your enemy's momentum against mm-hmm. him, whatever. It's not about your physical strength. And, yeah. he, and he's not getting that, he's not understanding. Like, he's, he's so, but he's like, I have power, I can use my power. <laughs> and the master's like, nah, you need to go meditate, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> calm down, calm down. Um, so against his master's wishes, he starts fighting in tournaments and stuff. And from the tournaments, he gets head uh, scouted by like Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves is like the head of this like shadowy fight club thing. Um, so he's like fighting in this fight club, blah, blah, blah. And like just through the ha- the different fights that he's having in the fight club, they're all making him more aggressive because he's, le- he's learning how to be a better fighter. But it's just making him more and more aggressive. And he's meant to be a Tai Chi brother. Mm-hmm. It's all like, go with the wind, be one. Mm-hmm. But he's becoming more and more aggressive, relying on his straight. He's poking people in the eyes. He's doing all, <laughs> kind of, he's doing all <laughs> kinds of dirty, dirty moves and whatever. And, his, and like, all, while, all the while, he's still like talking to his master. But obviously, his master's seeing him like turn into the dark side, so to speak. Yeah. Like, no, don't do it. Like, calm down. Like, um, Have you watched Cobra Kai? No. Okay, because I say that's a very similar very plot similar. to what's happening yeah. Kai. Because obviously you've got like, have you seen Karate Kid? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so you got like Mr Miyagi style of fighting, which is the pretty Tai Chi, just the defensive, kind like of, yeah. yeah. And then you've got the Cobra style, which is just aggressive, very aggressive, fight, yeah, hit fight, first, fight, yeah. Fight. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so essentially, Keanu Reeves' organization is basically like a reality TV show. So they've been filming him all this time, like through the fights, but also like his personal life and stuff. And showing like the conflict between him and his master, or whatever. So it's just some rich, but it's kind of like Squid Game, where like some rich bastards are mm-hmm. like, like watching his entire life. Yeah. And the end game of this show is they're trying to get him to be more aggressive, so that eventually he kills someone in a fight. Okay. And he learns about this, and he's like, no, 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 I'm not going to kill anyone. That's not like I'm not here to kill whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. So he basically he gets a fight, and like they're all expecting to kill someone, the person he's fighting. He's like, I refuse, I refuse, I refuse. I want to fight Keanu Reeves, like the, the boss of the organization. Um, and yeah, eventually Keanu Reeves is obviously like, huh, you want to fight me? Hell no. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a G in a suit. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't fight the likes of you kind of vibe. But eventually, yeah, things happen. They end up fighting. He buys him. Like, yeah, he retired. He, he, he is one of the ones where he's losing the fight because he's doing the aggressive style, whatever, yeah, whatever. The and then he starts doing the Tai Chi, the defensive, starts like just getting out of the way and then throwing him, and yeah. doing, using his own momentum against him, and then using his master's proper Tai Chi. And like, he wins like the Shang Chi fight in the beginning. Yeah, yeah literally. Like, yeah, and he wins it that way. Okay. And, and, he, and then, like, obviously, his master comes and like pats him on the back. Like, <laughs> well done. You would do. Your meditation has paid off. <laughs> is, um, is is it like how much is it in English and how much is it in like Chinese or Mandarin? Sort of is it only about fifty fifty? Okay, it's only about fifty fifty. Actually, did you know? Actually, I, I tell a lie. I would say most of it is in English. It's only really like when the main character's talk, talking to his master that's in Mandarin. Mm. Almost everything else, I would say, is in English. Okay, so yeah, I might, I might give it away. Sounds quite good actually. Yeah, it's good. It's good fun. Good fun. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I think, yeah, that sounds, that sounds about it, honestly. Yep. Um, so you are ready to call it raps? Again, I don't think we're going to play a song on the outro. I think we'll just, we'll just uh, end, end it. Yep, that's it for me, mate. That's it for me. All right, well, make sure you follow us on the Twitter. That's at Five Letters Podcast. Uh, that's the number five. Same thing on Instagram, same thing on YouTube. We don't have a TikTok, even though we probably should just for like little short clips and stuff but hey ho maybe one day um and yeah catch us back here in two weeks time same time same place peace out peace peace